guys, welcome to Abundant Life. I am Pastor Dave. I get to be the lead pastor uh, here, 54 Dunroman Avenue, Bible Hill. Happy Wednesday to you, December 9th, 2020. It's so hard to believe that this is where we're at already. Um, it just feels like just a little while ago we started the year, and yet in a few weeks we'll have started a brand new year. <laughs> This day has also flown by, had such a glorious time, a blessed time. Um, I have the amazing opportunity to be one of the in-class pastors for uh, CCA, Colchester Christian Academy, and grade sevens and eights, uh, I've been hanging out with them since the beginning of the year. They keep letting me come back, <laughs> and we're having a good time. My hope, my goal, my vision is that not so much that I'm going to give them any profound things specifically, but that we grow together in the Lord, that each day we take another step and another step and another step, uh, you know, and, and by the end of this this season that I get to spend with them, that we, we have all grown up in the Lord, grown a little bit closer to Jesus, and they blessed me today. I mean, they, they, they gave me, I don't know if you can see this or not, um, I'm going to kind of show it. Um, it is a cross, but it's made to look like bacon. Uh, I do like bacon. They searched that out. And that's just one of the gifts that one of the students made for me. I uh, get to carry bacon uh, <laughs> with me around. Man, they gave me bacon flavored. No, what is it? Maple flavored bacon jerky. I didn't even know that existed. And yet, Let's just say that bag no longer exists. I'm sitting here huffing it. <laughs> and I got a few other things planned on probably rocking uh, something else out on Sunday. We shall see. Uh, but man, I just had a great time. I want to say thanks again so much for that class. Uh, but as I was coming through, you know, coming out the day and I left there and you can see, not in the school, but I just drove down the road a little bit. You can just see this tension. You know, every place you go, you can feel the tension of, of what this year has seen to produce uh, in the hearts and, and in in the lives, I mean, of people. And, and there's some people that it just seems like it's no big deal. They just continue on with life. It is what it is. There are other people that have, it's a very tense thing. Grocery shopping is very intense. It's like it's a covert operation here. You're like, you know, looking all the time. And, uh, you know, and, and I tend to be one of those people a little bit more chill. I'm singing, I'm whistling. I'm, I'm not, I almost said dancing. You do not want to see this thing dance. Uh, but, you know, I just enjoy my time. Every chance I get, I'm talking to people. I went in to get some blood work done uh, last week. And, of course, you have to set up an appointment now. And so I'm sitting in the in the waiting room. And I happen to, where I'm sitting at, I'm looking right at the side of some guy's face, an older gentleman. I try to carry on a conversation with him. But you could tell uh, he was not comfortable with conversing. Hopefully, it wasn't just me. <laughs> uh, you know, but there's just a lot of stuff going on. And... And, and the reality is, church, I'm speaking specifically to the believers in the church right now, is that we cannot expect the world to operate as the church should when the church isn't even doing it fully successfully. You know, one of the things that I don't like that I've seen this year, and I'm not specifically talking about abundant life by any means, I'm just talking about people that confess to be Christians and believers that are operating from a place of not, not even fear, it's division. One of the things that I realize is that I'm not always going to agree with you. And one thing I realize is that even though most of the time I'm right, <laughs> That is not true either. <laughs> I know that you're not always going to agree with me. But one of the things that has to be a staple, that has to be a standard uh, in the life of a believer is we hold the Word of God as our truth, even if we're not seeing it. And if we disagree, we operate from a place of love and, a, and, and, the, and the proper place. And when we stand in that place, when we work from that place, when we operate from that place as believers, then we shine the light of Jesus Christ to the world around us. I need you to get a picture of this. We're coming into Christmas uh, season, and, and I talked a little bit about this with uh, CCA students this morning. But if you can get a picture of what that first Christmas was like, we got a pregnant first time pregnant woman. 
who doesn't have a bedroom, doesn't have a bed. She has a barn. She's got her husband there who is also a first time dad. She's surrounded by animals and Lord knows what else. And here she is in this place giving birth to the Son of God. And then it says after she's given birth uh, that they take this baby and they laid him in a manger. And, and if you can get a picture, I grew up in Cowtown, uh, you know, and if I know what feeding troughs look like. When I was really young, 11, 12 years old, I used to bike out uh, to, the, to a farm. A farmer hired me and I had to muck out the stalls. And so every single day I had to shovel all the junk that was, that was all in the feeding place where we fed the cows. I had to clean all that out, wheelbarrow it out, and we just threw it out. It was disgusting. Why? Because animals ate from it. <laughs> and this is what Jesus was laid in. And yet when we look at that picture of the first Christmas day, when we look at that picture of the barn and the animals and the manger scene and all that thing, we see it with this most holy glow. It doesn't look at all what it actually would look like. Why? Because Jesus is there. Because Jesus has shown up. Jesus has made his appearance in that situation. And I think that that's the, that's the, that's the message to the church uh, right now, but that should be the message from the church is that no matter what the situation is going on, we have a hope. We have a blessed hope, and his name is Jesus Christ. And that's where we come back to, uh, just a really quick, the topic that I kind of wanted to hit on for a second tonight is that, that our mission is to produce the fruit of the Spirit. And the, the Galatians 5, 22 and 23, we've heard it so many times. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control folks if you're anything like me you struggle in at least a few of those things but our mission i don't believe our mission is to focus on on making that fruit uh appear before people but our mission is to be in alignment to be filled up with the holy spirit in our life our mission is to line ourselves up so that we're producing the character of God. Well, how do we do that? I believe it's connected to what John the Baptist said, I must decrease, not try harder. I must decrease, I must empty me of me so that he may increase. I must allow myself, swallow back my pride, swallow back my stubbornness, swallow back my doubt, swallow back my fear, swallow back those, uh, those things that, that just that can come against the Word of God. And I must allow Him to take the front seat, to Him to be the forefront. The nine character traits that, it, that uh, are the fruit of the Spirit are what enable us to represent Jesus here in our lives. Every believer, young and not young, uh, has access to these traits because they're products of the Holy Spirit working in each of us. God's plan since the beginning of time, since the beginning when he, when he created man, when he created men and women at the very beginning, his intent, his desire, his plan is that he was going to have a relationship with us and through this relationship in constant fellowship with him that we would reveal him and his goodness Let's go ahead and say goodness mm, good we serve a good god and he, we would be the revelation of his goodness of his awesomeness, of his mercy, of his grace, of, of surrender, of his holiness, of his righteousness, so that we could reveal that, his amazingness to the entire world. Here's one of the biggest keys that I believe that it takes to living out this fruit is that we cannot do it unless we're connected 
and constantly connected to Jesus Christ. Philippians 1 6 is my favorite verse. I mean, I got a lot of verses that I really, really like, but Philippians 1 6 is one of those verses that is stuck. That one of the first times I heard it, it just stuck with me. And it says this that we can be confident of this very thing that God, that has begun a good work in each of us will continue that good work until we are in the position of perfection. Perfect, really, Pastor Dave? We can be perfect? You know what? If the Bible says it, yes. But it's not something that we try really hard to get to. It's not something that we can do by ourselves. It's something that God performs that God does on the inside of us when we surrender ourselves to him. And it's not just like, here I am, God, take me, do whatever you want to, because what it is, is God, I give myself to you and I want to be actively involved in seeing your will performed through my life. God wants to use each of us to, to, to represent hope and restoration to the world around us. We cannot do this separate from Christ. We cannot, I love, I've been looking, I've been working on another uh, little booklet for the church here. And uh, one of the things that I've been talking, uh, writing about a lot today is that is how big of a deal relationships are to the community of believers. You know, I think that we've lived too long, like, like community doesn't matter, that fellowship doesn't matter, that, that connection doesn't matter, and yet we're called to be members of the same body. And we have to get to that place where we recognize that, uh, hey, listen, I need Jesus and I need you. In reality, whether you like it or not, you need me and we need each other. You know, it, it, we are in this together because our mission is singular and that's to see that Jesus be revealed to the world because Jesus is the hope to this world. And this world needs restoration. This world, it is a broken world that Jesus Christ has already paid for. Uh, I'm going to just tidy up. Uh, with just a couple of little tiny things. It takes self-control to be broken, to be hurt, to be scared, to not totally be sure, and yet to respond with love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness, <laughs> gentleness and self-control. It takes a lot of self-control to be in that place. Living out the fruit of the Spirit gives us opportunity for God's hope and restoration to show up in our lives and to reveal God to others. And so it's not something, yes, it absolutely is something. There are times, I'm telling you what, there are things, there, there's things that I have the, you know what they say, the patience of Job in, and then there are other things that, oh man, it gets me and it's hard to operate in, in, in patience, uh, you know, but these give us opportunity for God to be revealed. When, when I don't blow up like I used to, it gives people that used to know me that way to say, hey, I see something different in your life. Uh, we might not always have the answer, but we are in a relationship, a re love relationship with the God who always has the answer. So when challenges and difficulties come into our life, we lean into the Spirit of God to help us respond with the fruit of the Holy Spirit. How do we overcome our brokenness? We remember that God is always faithful and then watch the fruit of the Spirit be produced in our lives. Church, the world needs Jesus. We are the carriers of the gospel of Jesus Christ, but we are also the distributors of the gospel of Jesus Christ. In this Christmas season, I pray that you are walking out the light, shining the light of Jesus every place you go. Hey, listen, we'd love for you to connect to, to us right here at Abundant Life. You can check us out. Check out our website. Uh, we, have a, we have someone that's been really diligent at, at getting that updated, trying to make it uh, easily accessible. Check it out, myabundantlife.ca. You can check us out Sunday mornings there as well but listen bless you if we can do anything for you please let us know